Hey there, it's Sydney with Tastefully Frugal, and today we're gonna to be making a really fun project that is perfect for you or to give as a gift. Today, we are going to be making personalized casserole dishes that we are going to have etched into the back. So this is a really easy project, whether you are a new Cricut user or whether you have been using a Cricut for a while, and it's a really quick and easy project too. We are going to be using Armor Etch. I just have this little bottle of Armor Etch here, and I only used about a quarter of the bottle to make two casserole dishes. So a little bit goes a long way. I've linked this um, Armor Etch in the description of the video as well. I'm also going to be using this uh, Starcraft stencil vinyl. It worked really, really well with making sure that there were no bubbles um, or creases in the line, um, creases anywhere in the design. Um, you can also use permanent vinyl as well. I just uh, really like using the stencil vinyl for this project. And we are going to be using the Cricut Maker. You can do this project with any Cricut machine. Um, I'm just show, I will just show you in the video how to do it with the Maker. So if you prefer uh, to read you the tutorial, I have linked a blog post with step-by-step -step instructions in the video as well. But let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna hop into to Design Space and I want to show you first the easiest way to create your stencil design for doing this and then we'll get to applying uh, the etching cream. Okay, so the first thing we want to do in Design Space is to get our image onto our canvas. So we will go to Uploads and I already uploaded this fun little kitchen utensil design. So we'll click that click insert and we will have that uploaded. Next, we want to add our name. So we'll click the text box and just type our last name in and then move it over to the center of the design where, we're, where we will want it. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered right now because we are going to change the text first and I'm going to filter my fonts to single layer fonts since we only want one piece, like the name to be in one piece. And then a font that I really like uh, for these types of designs is called Vintage Curveball Sands. So we change that to Vintage Curveball and then we will we will change the width of it so it is as wide as our uh, utensil design. Now there's a lot of open space on the bottom so I'm going to unlock the dimensions so that I can make the name taller without changing the width. So once you have your design how you like it, you'll want to select both layers, so the name and the design, and then go to Align and center horizontally. This will make sure everything is lined up center. And then we're actually going to weld it. The reason we're going to weld it is because we want to slice it out of the rectangle for the stencil. And if you attach it, it will still be in multiple pieces. So we wouldn't be able to slice, but because we welded it, it is all one piece now. So let's go ahead and add our stencil shape. We're going to go to shapes and then square. And then I sized uh, the bigger casserole dish. That's the one that we're going to be making today. And I sized it to be um, for the stencil itself. If it's 11 and a half inches wide and about uh, seven and three eighths tall, I found that's a perfect size. So I just changed the size of our design first to see if we can get it to fit the rectangle. Um, and now I'm changing the size of the rectangle to that 11 and a half by seven and three eighths. So we'll move our design over to the rectangle and then you can go up to arrange, which is next to the align button and just click send to front and then it's in front and we will just make it a little bit smaller so that there is room. Um, so it doesn't basically get cut off from the design. So we have both layers selected. We'll go to align center so that everything is centered up and then we are going to slice the design. So when you click slice, it will, we will remove the two sliced images and so that we just have that one stencil piece. Now we are ready to cut our design. So let's go to make it. And because this is a stencil and it's going on the bottom of, a casser of the casserole dish, you want to make sure to mirror your design. So click mirror and then when your machine is connected, you'll have your material um, menu pop up. Just go to browse all materials. I doubt stencil vinyl is in um, the favorites for anyone right now. So just to uh, search stencil and pick stencil vinyl and hit OK. And then let's go ahead and head over to our maker and I can give you some tips on cutting it. So you'll want to load your stencil vinyl like you would any adhesive vinyl, just uh, with the background, the bottom and then the colored side up. 
and then obviously when the uh, load it into your machine when the arrows flash and then when uh, the C button flashes click that to start the cutting process um, now the weeding process will be a little bit different if you haven't done a stencil before I'll show that to you in just a second we're not going to remove everything around the design we're actually going to remove the design itself so the first thing you want to do is remove the back or the the border around the whole design and then you'll find the edge of your design which is the top part of our utensils here and you'll just start removing that and then just continue to remove the design itself so that you have vinyl the rectangle that we have it will be your stencil and the etching cream will go where the design is. A few tips um, when doing this, having a weeding tool like this weeding hook from Cricut is super helpful. I also found that these little pieces right here on the brush, they did not do well on my first pro on my first etching project. So I just went ahead and um, cut, pulled them up and cut them so that we have a cleaner finished project. Once that is done, you'll want to apply your transfer tape. So just measure your transfer tape. Measure it so that you have about an inch and a half extra transfer tape on the top of your design. Um, and I'll show you why that's important when we apply the transfer tape to the casserole dish. Now when you're working with a big design like this, this is an almost 8 inch design by almost 12 inches, line your transfer tape up in the middle and then slowly push up and to the very top and while still holding on to the bottom and then push down to the bottom and use your scraper tool to press or your squeegee to press in to your design. You'll also want to press on the back of the uh, stencil vinyl to make sure that that stencil is on your transfer tape really well. Before doing anything, clean your casserole dish, the bottom of your casserole dish with rubbing alcohol. This helps, it cleans the dish and it helps keep the vinyl adhered so you don't have um, a lot of bubbles or things like that. So once we've cleaned our casserole dish and we let it dry for about 10 seconds, it really doesn't take very long to dry, then we are going to line up our uh, stencil on our casserole dish. So just remove the backing from your stencil. As you can see here, it cut through a little bit, but that wasn't a problem at all. It cut through the backing a little bit, wasn't a problem at all. And then what you'll want to do is how you have that extra little bit up top of transfer tape, line that part up first and then slowly press down, just moving along your design from top down to bottom to make sure that you don't have any creases or bubbles in the design. You'll see with the stencil vinyl, you might have some bubbles near the outside of the design, but since we're not putting etching cream there, it's not really a big problem. So then just use your squeegee tool to make sure that your stencil is pressed in really good into the bottom of your casserole dish. Then just peel your transfer tape away. And once the transfer tape is off, you can look for bubbles that might cause issues with the etching cream. Like I said, you can see some over like in the top corners are not close to the design itself. We're not really worried about those. I'm worried about ones that are close to the letters um, or close to the designs. And you can use your squeegee to press those out. If you have some that you can't get out with the squeegee, I have another tip which helps a ton. Um, so there are some over here, like by that brush where we cut the pieces. I'm just going around the edges of the design with the squeegee to try to get out all of the wrinkles or bubbles. If there's still something you can't get out, use a blow dryer to heat up your design. Just do it on low heat and just for about 10 seconds around your entire design. And once you do that, just press with your finger to get those bubbles out um, as close to like where there's an edge as possible. I just had a few spots on the name um, and then on the one of the spatulas. So once we have all our bubbles out and we are good to go, put on some gloves to protect your hands and then you're going to use your armor etch. I didn't pour the armor etch into a bowl or anything. I just dipped my paintbrush into the bottle and you're going to want to cover up your entire design. Make sure to stay away from the edges of the stencil so it doesn't get on um, your casserole dish. If it does, just get a paper towel and wipe it down right away and it'll be fine. But you'll wanna go make sure every part of your design is covered and then you're going to go over it again and go continue to put uh, your armor etch cream on your design for about five minutes. 
Now these brushes, these, um, what are these brushes called? Regular paint brushes like the bristle brush is what you want to use. Foam brushes absorb the armor etch and they don't get as much of your armor etch uh, cream into your dish. You can see here that I got a little bit on the edge. If you clean it right away with a paper towel, you're completely fine. So just keep going over your design. I like to go horizontal and then back the other way and then vertical and back the other way, but you'll do that for a fi about five minutes and then clean your design off um, with the transfer tape on in the sink. Once you've cleaned it with warm water, just bring it back in, dry your design off and peel your stencil away. You'll wanna just slowly peel up the stencil. If you're, the stencil vinyl is easier to get off than um, permanent vinyl because it's not as sticky. So that is the, one of the reasons why I chose to use stencil vinyl instead of permanent vinyl for this project. And then you can just take the little pieces that didn't come off, just take those off with your finger and you will have your design. Now you also, if you have any excess um, water or etching cream on your design, or not on your design, but on the casserole dish, not on the design, you can definitely wipe that off at this point with a paper towel like I just did. Um, and then once everything is peeled off, I like to clean the casserole dish again with rubbing alcohol just to make sure that everything is off of it. And this is a really cool process because you can see um, the design coming through with the etching cream as the rubbing alcohol dries. So as you can see, this is a super quick and super easy project. It's a great project for, for beginner uh, crafters. It's also a great last minute gift, uh, craft gift. I got this two set of casserole dishes. I linked it in the description of the video, but I got it at Walmart. I wanna say it was like $13, um, but you can use any size casserole dishes. I know there are some work that some that work better than others. These are Pyrex brand, and I didn't have any problem with getting the etching cream to adhere. But I have linked in the description for the video all the materials we used as well as the blog post with a full written description. If you have any questions that I didn't answer during the video, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, if you like this video, I'd love to have you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Tastefully Frugal for more Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials. Have a great day.